I have been on the Cape since, living on the Cape probably since around 1985. So I actually grew up over the bridge. I'm another wash ashore. I grew up in Middleborough, which is right on the other side of the bridge, not that far. All my imagery is based on my time that's spent at Sandy Neck. And we have a small, one of those small cottages that are way out near the edge of the tip where we spend our summers and sometimes we've spent an extended period of time. We've been there as much as from March through the end of October. So I know the place really well and I've always had this really deep connection to the landscape since I was young. And I like to find like these, you know, places that were separate from the rest of the world. Um, and Sandy Neck is definitely that because there was no electricity, no running water. Um, we were really kind of isolated from the rest of the world. And so I think a lot of the things that I'd look for when I was a child were like these little special places out in the woods or in an old abandoned barn or something, you know, a space apart. And I think that's really important today in today's world because we're always so um, bombarded with so much, so many distractions that we need to find kind of the space within the distractions. So that's really the essence of what my paintings um, seek to capture. So the subject matter is Sandy Neck because that's a place where I've kind of felt that connection with the world outside of myself. Um, so I feel very centered and, and you know, at peace there within the, uh, amidst all the, the noise and confusion. We don't have electricity, so we don't have televisions and we don't have a lot of those distractions. We play a lot of music around the campfire and a lot of reading. So it's much more com contemplative. Sometimes the quiet space is, it's not even physical silence, because I know some artists that work really well with like a lot of like loud music, but I, I think in a way what that's causing is it, it's causing them to still find a space inside them. It's really funny, it's like it's almost better sometimes because your brain maybe will shift and, and let your intuition kind of take over what you're doing when you're painting, so you're not spending so much time thinking about, um, you know, what color should I choose, what paintbrush should I pick up, whatever. That chatter gets, you know, diffused because you're listening to something else. And so your intuition is getting to move and you're getting to respond based on what your eyes are seeing and you're just responding. And, and, and one of the things, the things I say about painting is that it's, it's not only the marks that we make intentionally, it's not only our control of what we're doing, but it's being able to recognize it when those kind of magic things happen. You know, letting intuition work for a certain period of time and then recognizing when something brilliant comes out. It's kind of the same thing, I think, with music or when you're kind of like trying to compose something or write something, you know? You kind of just got to get into the groove and the flow of it and, you know, maybe a lot of what you do isn't very good, but then something kind of clicks and, oh, there's a piece of something that works and then you got to kind of gather all those pieces. And that's what painting is like. I like to work in oil painting because I like the, um, we all, often will call it like a, a plastic medium. It's something that can be changed, manipulated, altered. Um, endlessly, uh, uh, and, and, but you know, really any medium can do that. My undergraduate work is in etching, so I did printmaking, which is very, very detailed, very line oriented, very graphic, and it's an idea. Um, and then you know, the desire for color, easier color came because it's much more process orientated in printmaking, um, the way I was approaching it. So then I did pastel for a while because it's pure color and was still drawing and all that sort of stuff. But eventually I've evolved to, not evolved, but it got to the point where it was harder to find the colors that I wanted. So it made more sense to stop painting for me and I had done painting in the past. And this one seems to be, I mean, I, I work in acrylics sometimes as well, depending, acrylics dry fast and quick and allow you to move a lot quicker. Um, but there's something about, um, I think they dry a little too quick for me. And the biggest reason that I work with oil right now is that I work with a lot of wax medium too, and the wax can mix with the oil and it can't mix with really, can't, you can't use it as a medium with acrylic. And the thing that I like about the wax is it allows you for an extended period of time to be able to, it, it feels dry to the touch, but you can still scrape back into it and, and reveal things from the past. Where a lot and a lot of my work is kind of about that. So the content matches what I'm doing. It's that idea of, of taking away and bringing back something that might have been before. So because again, it's that kind of idea of recovering that quiet time or recovering that sense of being. So scraping actually kind of physically recreates the feeling I'm trying to elicit.
I think a painting is most successful when it reaches different people at different levels. So, I mean, I, mean, I can try, I don't, I no longer feel like I have to hit somebody over the head with exactly what I'm trying to say. And it's not important to me that you exactly understand. It's, my paintings, they're not illustrating stories. So I'm not trying to tell you something specific. And, but I'm trying to elicit, I am trying really to elicit a certain mood. And it may come from some real, really deeply personal, um, you know, search of my own. But what I want it to, I want it to resonate with other people in their own way. So some people will look at some of my houses, say, and they'll feel um, like they're desolate and lonely and, and, get, and sad. Um, other people feel that they're very like meditative and peaceful and calming. I mean, I have really no control. It, you know, that's the, what the person brings to the work when they look at it. So that's what I hope that you know people look at the paintings. They get some kind of sense of something, something else, something to think about in their in their lives, something to maybe something to connect with. I think that painting is about more than the depiction of things. I think that painting is not just about the subjects that we choose to paint. I think if there's a way that we can distill other things that we've learned about the world and about life in general, or maybe things we yearn for, and if there's a way to kind of distill that feeling, impression, emotion, it's about you know dis the distillation. It's about figuring out what's superfluous in the painting that can be left out and what remains as the essential elements.